Now, whether you're DC or DCC, have you ever considered that might just be an easier way of doing your wiring? Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. In today's video on layout wiring, mm, interesting. But this is across all gauges and of course DC and DCC. So it should have something for everybody. But before we kick off in the details, I'd just like to take a, for a word of warning. And that's the fact that in your attic, your shed, your railway room, your club or whatever, safety is always going to be important. So let's protect it with an earth leakage circuit breaker before we get into the heavy wiring. Because if you do make a mistake, the last thing you need to do is have a house fire, your shed fire, or whatever. Um, and on the similar vein, just over there, there's a fire extinguisher next to the door. CO2, nice big fire extinguisher, very useful. If my place catches fire, I will run for the door, that's the exit, obviously, grab the fire extinguisher and fight the fire. It's the kind of thing I've always been brought up so, uh, when I was in the Navy. It's, we, you know, when you're sailing around the Mediterranean, your ship catches fire, dialing 999 won't help you. So if you're prepared to fight your fire, then fair play. But if you're without risks, then perhaps you need to get out. But if it's a small thing, you know, perhaps a, a little bit of a smouldering, have a fire extinguisher, it gives you half a chance. But keep it next to the door because that's your exit. Don't stick it over the other side of the room because you could get trapped. Right, enough of the serious stuff. Let's get into wires. I think we need to talk just for a second about controllers because obviously you need to buy a controller that will uh, provide sufficient power for your layout, whether it's a great big DCC thing running half a dozen sound fitted O gauge locus or just a small DC layout running N gauge, whatever. But you need to be aware of how much power you're going to draw and buy the right um, power supply accordingly. Okay, cable. Right, as far as I can figure out, there are four ways of measuring cable sizes. And that is uh, firstly by the cross-sectional area of the, of the conductor. There's the AWG, the American wire gauge, used by our folks across the pond, but across the world, you know, as well, but tends not to be in the UK. There's the strand size and quantity. Ooh, we'll come back to that. That's quite popular in this field of, of our hobby. And there's the power rating, whereas it just might have five amps stamped on the cable drum itself. So those are the four. I'm, I'm sure there are more, but I'd like to bring to your attention a Railway Scenics. And we'll sh take a look at his website shortly. A guy called Stephen Lane. Charming chap, I've spoken to him. Now, on his website, he sells lots of stuff. And in case you go there and spend hundreds of pounds or whatever on cable, I'll just let you know there's nothing in it for me. This is not, um, what do you call it, an associate link or anything like that. It's just a good, honest chap doing a good, honest job. So take, we'll take a look at his website, but just so you know, um, there's, it's, you know this is a, a full disclosure thing. There's nothing there. Right. Now, Stephen Lane, his website. Let's have a look. So here we are at the Railway Scenics uh, homepage. And please don't lose sight of these tabs across the top because the info and help ones um, is most useful. So when we scroll down the page, ordinary sort of layout of a, of a website and he does lots of stuff and all the rest of it. Right, let's get into the bits we're interested in, which is about the electrical stuff. Right, so here's all his electrical stuff and as you can see he sells a fair old bit of stock there. Cables, heat shrink and all this sort of stuff. Lovely. Right, information centre, all about him, the links, their products, blah blah blah. Um, but it gets into the finer details of wiring. Now, when you come into this one, layout and electrical wire details, now you get down into the, the nitty gritty of it all. Now, I'm not going to read all this, but I do suggest you come here and have a look. It will give you a great insight. And then, this is wonderful, Rail Scenics Beginner's Guide on DCC Bus Wiring. Now, if you're DC, don't run off at this stage, um, but this is brilliant. And there's a little um, section here, the caution section. Um, emphasizing that um, don't get don't get stuck into something you which could turn a bit on the dangerous side and all the rest of it and he goes into wire sizes and all this sort of stuff lovely really is good meaty information now I mentioned earlier about the differences in cable size so the American wire gauge um, millimeter of, uh, of uh, cross-section and then the UK wire sizes 
over here. And for an example, if we take 1602, um, it's also known as 20 AWG and it's half a millimeter cross sectional area. So let's go into wire sizes that we use. Now, you may have come across 702. It means there are seven strands of 0.02 millimeter wire within the insulation. It's rated at 1.4 amps or quite straightforward. And the same for 1602 and 2402 and 3202. We'll go back to 16. And as you can see, this one is now rated at three amps, 2402 is 4.5 amps and 3202 is 6 amps. Absolutely brilliant basic information on this gentleman's website. And of course you can go to electrical and you can uh, buy the wire from here and all this sort of stuff. It guides you through it. Um, it's all straightforward. Right. Um, oh sorry yeah we'll touch on reels so let's say let's take a price then 1602 100 meter reel um, 17 quid, well, depending on the colour. Is it? Oh, and it's all the same price, right? So, a 100 metre reel of 1602, 17 pounds 64, and I'm sure there'll be a bit of PMP &P on top of that, right? Great website, please clock this one. So, once you understand all about cables, you know, what else could there be to confuse you? Well, I found that when you talk about strands of wire, you are not talking about multi-core. This is multi-core. It's where uh, this cable has six different cores and they are different colors and each one may have multi strands, but that's the difference between multi-core and strand. There's also, obviously you could have just one solid wire as well, but just in case you think that um, multi-core is one color it isn't it's where that's where you get this sort of stuff which makes up things like loco net and telephone wire and all that that is multi-core right so let's get down to the nitty-gritty of how we wire our layouts now we're going to start by just wiring a pair of droppers onto this piece of concrete sleeper code 100 pico track now i'm going to use this cable here which is 1602 and as you can see, it comes in reels and I always write on them which one's which to save me getting confused because I'm not as bright as I think I am. So what do we do next? Well, first thing we need is a soldering iron. Now, I'll be perfectly honest with you. This is a cheap and cheerful one. There is a link in the description. It's not the best in the world. I mean, this is not a 400 quid weller. I think this retails for under 30 pounds. Like I say, link in the show more tab. And I use 6040 um, lead solder. Uh, all, all the time. I will never use anything else and I set my soldering iron to 400 degrees. Um, anything else I need? Um, a what you call, modeling knife or a Stanley knife to cut the, the webbing on the track, a, a file to file the underside of the track to make it uh, clean so that we can get the solder to adhere to it and a couple of short lengths of wire. Right, so I should just quickly whack these on and then we'll move on to the deeper stage of bus wires. Now please don't take this the wrong way, but this is certainly not um, a lesson in soldering. So all I do is I cut some of the webbing out. Then with the file, all I do then is I scratch up the surface of the underside of the track. Okay, next thing I need is the soldering iron and a bit of solder. Now the soldering, the soldering iron is clean and it's good to go at 400 degrees and all I do is pop it onto the piece of track, give it a few seconds to warm up and then in goes the solder. I tend to blow the um, fumes away because obviously you can see the um, the resin, the flux in the resin core solder, then you see the fumes coming off. Easy piece of cake. Next thing we need to do is we just need to trim back the uh, insulation on the cables. These are the best wire strippers I have ever come across. They are absolutely wonderful, though I will show you an alternative a little later. If you want to buy a pair of these, they're about £40 a pop and you just have to Google this number. There is no link in the show more tab. So 
all I do is snip back a little bit of insulation on these like so give them a twist and then obviously what I need is a to solder, solder these and if I just sort of this might need two hands in it really but I'll just pop it on the on the deck can't stay still you wretched thing oh, I'm just going to tin those lovely tin the other one make sure you can see lovely and then all we all I do then is I I is solder these so they come out of one hole now never forget which side your cables um, are because I normally wire my upper levels with black to the back so what I'm going to do is just add that cable onto that bit of solder give it a tug yeah good to go and the same on the other side and if you're scared of soldering this is an ideal sort of task to get your confidence up it really is just get a gash bit of track bit of solder give it a go so hopefully now I'm not going to embarrass myself when I try to pull these off brilliant and as you can see they both go together and I only need to drill one hole in the baseboard to get these down and you can't see any wires soldered to the sides of the rail okay now to the layout now if you're a regular to the channel you've probably seen this little board before um, I use it for some track laying um, some weathering because it goes from uh, concrete sleeper track into wooden and you're trying to get a decent blend but that's what I use um, and all I've got to do now is obviously pop this last piece of track in and uh, mark up where the wires need to go which is no big shakes and then just drill a hole straight through it and then we can get on with putting the wiring in so that should be about there let's have a look yep excuse the noise Then all I do is thread my wires through my hole. Pop the fish plates on. And we're all good to go. All I need to do is just pop a bit of copy decks underneath this and glue it down. And then we move on to the important bit, which is how we connect up all these wires into a bus. Now, before the DCC guys disappear, it's worth mentioning that with a DC layout, and let's say you've got a, a, a largish oval and you're only putting your feed into one area of 12 volts, you know, whereas you to make your train go flat out as it were, please don't think you're going to get 12 volts at the other end of your layout because it's not going to happen because you will get voltage drop around the layout, which is why um, droppers, you know, sort of every, I mean, within the DCC world, we tend to put droppers on every piece of track because you don't want to lose the DCC signal. But there's no harm in putting, you know, four or five droppers around your layout and running it off a bus as long as you're not doing that in isolated sections because that way you avoid um, the voltage drop and therefore your trains don't go slower as they get further away from your power clip or however you put your power in. So DC, DC guys, rail droppers are a good thing. Now as we wait for that glue to dry, I thought I'd just mention uh, some cable that I bought quite some time ago from Halfords and these are two small drums. And as you can see, there's 5 amp in black and 8 amp in red. Interestingly though, when I turn it on the other side, it talks about, um, it talks about power, which is measured in watts. So this one here is 60 watts, and obviously a car voltage is 12 
uh, 12 volts. So 12s into 60 goes 5, hence it's 5 amp cable. And similarly, this is 96 watts, so therefore it must be 8 amp cable. Easy stuff. Interestingly, only one of them actually mention the 2.5 millimeter cross-sectional area. It's perfectly serviceable for railway modeling um, should you have this sort of cable lying around. But this sort of, this, these are big numbers now, aren't they? Eight amps, this is major bus cables. This really is big stuff. So here we are ready to go with our bus wiring. Now, if I turn this over, you can see the cables. And the green cables are for the frogs, and I'm just going to pop those out of the way because we're not going to be fitting point motors to this just yet. Now, we'll save that for another day. Now, if it was just a small little diorama like this, you wouldn't bother with a bus wire. I mean, the best thing to do really is to use these type of terminal blocks. These are absolutely brilliant, and they seem to become quite popular within our model railway fraternity. And then I also suggested cutting the, um, these uh, shorting links in half and therefore rather than using the large ones you can actually do a 50-50 and in this case here you might choose to whack that in there, put all the reds in the red side and obviously the blacks in the black and then two feeder cables come in from your, your controller. These are brilliant and once more you men I mentioned they're in the show more tab. These are a wonderful thing and I think they come in in packs of eight or something like that, but they are absolutely brilliant. Um, what else is there? Right, these plug-in connectors. These are available from squirestools.com and obviously these plug into each other and, whoops, the wrong way around obviously. Was it the wrong way around? Yes, it was. So these, these are a great way of isolating sections of your layout. So if your boards come apart, um, you know, it's no big deal. You can just put, have this like a, a shorting link as I have here from the original Chadwick. But do remember that the power should be on the female side. The female has the power. Nothing new there then. Because obviously if the power is on these pins and you short them out, something's going to go sort of bang or whatever. So always remember to put the power into the female side so when you want to take it onto the next board, you use the male. And I will use one of these on the end of this board to bring power onto this little sort of diorama board, as we say. Right, that's that. The green cables are for frogs. I'll get those back out of the way and then we'll start on the bus wire. Now I've secured the frog wires with a couple of these little adhesive pads and a cable tie. And as you can see, I'm going for 2402 as the main bus wire. And as I mentioned, one of these small um, male connectors on the end to take power into this little board. So now we're faced with the dilemma of how do we connect a 2402 bus cable to various 1602 dropper wires. Well, back at railwayscenics.com with Steve's website, here we can see some clippy type connectors. I think they're known as Scotch locks. Now they were used extensively in the car industry and they probably still are. But I have a pet hate for these things, I must confess, because when you clip cables of various um, di uh, diameters together, I believe you can get issues. Now, there are people watching this who will say, Charlie, you're wrong. I use them all the day. They're absolutely gorgeous, blah, blah. And fine, that's absolutely great. If they suit you, then they suit you. But I must confess, I had some, didn't get on with them, hoofed them in the bin to stop me using them just in case I ran out of patience with soldering or whatever. But the, uh, these things I don't like. But if, if you can't solder or whatever, you, should, you perhaps you want to give them a go. But make sure they're accessible. Right. So where do we go from here if you don't want to use that type scotch lock type clip? Well, DCC Concepts have come up with a new idea. And that is using their wire strippers, okay? And these wire strippers are 23 pounds. And these things here, which are 17 pounds, DCC Concepts Power Bus Parts. Using these two things together give you a very workable alternative. So let's get the camera in close and I'll show you what I mean. Now to make things easier to see, I've just got a piece of plywood here. And this is one of those 
um, supports from DCC concepts. And hopefully you can see that there are three pieces of metal and this one is marked positive and this side is marked negative. And there's a look a little window opening there and there and some holes there and there. And the center piece has a hole in it to secure it to your baseboard. So how does it work? Well, it's all to do with these little holes on the sides. Now using a pair of Zuron, is it pronounced that way, track cutters, I'm just going to cut into the outside edge of those windows, let's say. And then if I bend them like so, I am able to feed into that gap a cable. Wow. So if I now just secure this to the board, which I shall do with a quick press of a brattle, and then hopefully a screw and a screwdriver. A screwdriver which needs charging, as you can see. Lovely. Then all we need to do now is to thread our cables through. But this is where the magic starts because not only are these ordinary kind of um, strippers, but if I were to put this cable in between and action these strippers, lo and behold, they compress the insulation either side of the cut and the cut doesn't come through any of the wires. Beautiful. Now, this side I believe was the positive, so we simply thread that through, straighten it out, and then sort of crimp it down a little bit. And it will grip the cable there. And we're in. Now what do we do? Well, in the fullness of time, we just pop a blob of solder on there. And these the um, insulation may well creep back up towards that area. Beautiful. So what do we do with this? Well, we do need to do a little bit of soldering because there is that hole coming through there. And now all we need to do is solder that in place and we're good to go. It just seems a very easy way of doing things. Right, I shall just bring in the soldering iron. So here we are once more with my trusty soldering iron and let's bring some heat into here. And then hopefully whap some solder in, in place. And we should be all good to go. Give it a chance to cool. And there it is, solid as a rock. Pretty nifty, I think. I shall just tin the the, the uh, 1602 cable and then we'll thread that one through the hole, whack some heat on the face of it there and there's that one in as well. Perhaps you can see it better from this side. I think that is a pretty nifty design. I mean, it's a permanent design, you know, in as much as it's not going to come um, falling off. And, uh, you know, if you need to come, hit, come in here and change things around a little bit, then so be it. You can always, you know, solder another 1602 in there. Um, but there's the main bus wire going through. Right. So all we need to do now is change that, uh, adopt this now into our little diorama board. Now I've screwed one, two, three, four of these uh, little boards in place. So now I just need to trim this cable down and I'll work from the inside out. I think it might be easier. I'll certainly do the droppers first. That seems to be the most sensible way of doing it. I'll trim those off and I'll use these trimmers from DCC Concepts 
and see how I get on with those. All seems quite simple. Whack a bit of flux, uh, a bit of solder on here. Perhaps tin a little bit on the face of the board as well. Pop it through the hole. Bend it up. Pliers on there. And then whack some heat on there. Lovely. All right, there's the black and just repeat for the red. Lovely. So that's those in place. So I should just run through and do the other droppers. So there we have it. One, two, three, four connectors. I'll be back tomorrow for the bus wires. Now the bus wire we're using is 2402 and I've soldered the first one onto the to the last terminal. So now we need to use these snazzy little strippers, strip them back and solder them on to the following three terminals and obviously do the same for the black cable. Now I want to leave just a little bit of slack in it. I don't sort of want it, you know, sort of piano sort of wire tight so um, if I get it there and then just mark it up with a little pen and there is where I want the center of these strippers to go and then hopefully when I do that it will be in the right place and let's have a little look just need to open that little jaw a bit more okay so there's my little bit of slack and I need a little bit of slack because you know in your layout you might sort of change your mind you want to put another set of droppers in here for another track that you where you do an amendment and obviously you need a little bit of slack to get these uh, strippers in so you know don't let's not have it too tight so that one needs to go there so if I close those jaws a little bit and then flatten it if that makes sense and now it's ideal to solder so let's have a little bash with some solder so you just flatten that down hopefully you can see this okay and then in there with the heat and as I said previously 400 is my sort of working temperature that's what I like to keep it on a nice shiny joint there all good to go right so now what we do is repeat it as we work our way along so back onto this one, a little bit of slack, mark it again, put that into the centre of the jaws, it seems to um, pull the insulation back in one direction, it pushes it to the right, um, so there was my little mark, hopefully you can see that. Um, but just be aware it moves it one way it doesn't sort of move doesn't appear to move both cables ba -da -bum. thread that in lovely flatten the tab over like so lovely and then time to solder so in with the heat again. Good lot of solder. Leave a nice shiny joint. Lovely. Looking good. Right. I'll be back to you when I've finished. Now to terminate these two wires into my little bit of 
uh, chock block, I tend to use boot lace ferrules because you know you're going to get um, an excellent joint. And if you're into any of these sort of gizmos, you'll find the links as usual in the show more tab. I do find the colours a little bit upsetting to my OCD because obviously I would much prefer a red one and a black one, but hey, you can't have everything. Pop that one on there. And then simply feed those into the terminal block. Gosh, lovely. Well, bar a continuity test, that's this board pretty much complete. And as you can see, uh, two of the terminals have, have two feeds, as it were, into them. So it's all pretty straightforward, really. Um, yes, my wiring OCD is completely satisfied, but at the end of the day, it's a very useful asset. Of course, it all comes down to these little um, wire strippers. And at the end of the day, and even if you choose not to use the DCC Concepts connectors, then clearly if you have your wiring underneath your board in place and then you wish to drop another couple of droppers onto it, excuse the pun, then just any old wire coming down, you can clearly pull back the insulation and then bring a new dropper in place and solder it on and then cover it with a bit of tape. Obviously you can't use heat shrink because you haven't cut the cable to get it on but if you can tape it up, then you're good to go. So um, these are a smashing little asset, and I think oh, they were 23 quid or something they cost, um, but well worth a go. So all I need to do now is, uh, is pop a loco on and do a little bit of a continuity test. Now here we are with my faithful old Dynamis, and as I said, the female has the power. Therefore, there's no pins. We can't short them out on anything. The pins are on the on the, the board itself so all I need to do is connect this up and put the handset on and get a loco and as you'd expect my faithful little 08 should make short work of it lovely so there we have it really um, DCC uh, concepts little uh, attachments seem to work fine. They do make the wiring somewhat easier, but of course, working underneath the board is gonna be much more difficult. If you can do this during the build, it makes me so much easier. And of course, if you've got hinge boards or a small exhibition layout, it's absolutely fine. When the boards are finally in place, and then you decide to do your wiring afterwards, that's a very sensible solution, really. Um, you know, and these, these things don't make it any easier because you're trying to solder upside down, which is an absolute nightmare. And of course, it's quite dangerous. I've done it on this layout and, you know, you wear that eye protection because you never know if you're going to get a bit of solder dropping on your head. I mean, you know, sometimes we're forced into these situations. But of course, for adding on the odd wire, these little strippers are absolutely brilliant. And there we go. Well, that just about sums up this video. As, it, as you'd expect, the normal sort of end of sequence is don't forget to give the thumbs up to the video if you've enjoyed it. Um, it's been a little bit of adventure doing something um, on more of a diorama basis, um, but it's a little bit of fun, but it's a good teaching aid doing these little boards. And of course, if you've got a gas bit of board and you can sort of learn your craft on it, it's far more easier to do it here than making mistakes on your, your big layout when you get sort of stuck into it. But there we go. Anyway, all I've got to do now is wrap up and thank the patrons for um, their support on the channel. If you don't understand how the patron system works, with me, the patrons always get the video 24 hours before the general release. Therefore, the video they get has no um, adverts in it. So it's just something they sort of pay for, really. And of course, they get it 24 hours earlier. So if I promote anything such as these 
type of uh, tools, then they, <laughs> they get first dibs really. And that's why sometimes you'll find that they've run out of something. It's because the patrons have got in there first and that's an asset to be, to be one. So if you'd like to become a patron, there's the button. If you haven't become a subscriber, and there's the button, well, um, and there should be a video here. And if you said hello to me at Wally, thank you very much. It was a great couple of days out. Take care. Bye-bye.